What's up, everyone? Just going to cast a game here. Viewers sent this one in. Um, it's about a... I think he said his rating is somewhere around 1,200, 1,300. Um, gamble. All right, looks like he's playing Mongols here. On against uh, Paitoya on who's playing Koreans and uh, looks like a good start got both his houses down sheep under the town center scouting in a circle here and uh, obviously spots as he's looking around probably spots there's a wood camp here here up here and over to the side um, and one of those things you always have to decide right at the start of the game is where am I going to build a lumber camp and uh, I think in this case, it's not an easy answer. If it was me, I'd probably pick picking the one in the back here. Maybe even the one on the side or the one on the bottom. I guess I can, you kind of got four options here. They're all near the back and they all seem pretty efficient. And he's choosing this one probably in his little nook. It's a good choice. Now, does he know the map? Let's just see here. Oh, well, it's mega random. So he is scouting the map. He's not sure what it looks like. Okay, so this lumber camp is not bad, but uh, I typically try and build it one tile closer. I think you can fit it right in that patch of four, like where that villager is down here and up one there. But uh, it's actually still pretty good. Found all his resources here, and Mega Random sometimes does this, right? You get a ton of ton of deer. The second you see water too, you have to scout um, a little bit more with the water and see what's going on there. Obviously, he's trying to find his second boar first. Um, but uh, with Mongols, sometimes it's useful to take that early, which it looks like he's doing here. Some more sheep there. Alright, speed up just a touch. Okay, he's trying to find his second boar, but it's mega random. Sometimes you don't have one. And it looks like in this case, that is the case here. So that's a bit of a surprise. In this case, it looks like he's going to go mill the deer. Yeah. Yeah, milling the deer, okay. So it's one of those things where Mega Random can be deceptive, because if you knew that there was a lot of fish, you'd probably want to build a dock. Um, but uh, milling deer is never usually not a bad idea with Mongols either, so. See, his opponent is docking, so that might give him a slight economic edge, although Mongols is pretty good too. So he's had pretty much continual villager production here, and he's got good economy management. So he looks like he's going for a pop 20 up, which is a good time for Mongols. Especially if you're going to go scouts or skirms or men arms or something like that. So, And he managed to delay the loom to the last second. That's really good. Now building the barracks, that's not a bad spot. Probably encouraged somewhere as part of the wall around your base. Usually you want to assume you're going to wall in like a box. Um, it's not a terrible spot either, but... Good scouting of his opponent. Seeing where the town center is, didn't get any shots taken. Okay, he sees that his opponent didn't take the deer. So, you know, you'd be, I'd be, you'd be, I want to ask the question, and not on berries either. The second you see that, you want to ask, okay, where is my opponent on water, or what's going on here? And it looks like he is going for a stable. He has quite a few idols here, but he is putting them all to work there. Keeping the low HP ones, that's good. And a house as well. Looking good. Now, usually you want to get the farm upgrade just before. I think he's getting it now. But uh, I always recommend research the farm upgrade, then start building the farms. Um, I think, I assume he got the wood upgrade. The other thing too is usually put the gather point near your enemy base so that you can keep them from walling as long as possible. And it looks like you're, the enemy did do that box wall which uh, makes it so you can't do a lot of damage here. And if you're ever housed, well, I guess in this case you don't have the choice, but usually choose the villager instead of the, still the mil military unit there. Now, he does see that there's a dock here. So the question, I think this is a good idea. Hit the dock. Um, there's not a lot else you can do when they're fully walled, so you might as well knock the dock out. I guess you can harass your enemy a bit too. Oh, interesting. He is going forward with three villagers. Um, that's going to be... His opponent does have stone in here, but he only has one gold. And the wood is rangeable. 
And it looks like he is building a dock and a couple houses here. Let's slow down, Touch. It's getting a bit too fast for me. Um, one thing I would say is uh, you want to always have one villager building houses and walls, just palisade walls. It uh, means that you'll slowly get your map closed and you won't take any big risks down the road. Um, I do think this is a good tower. Um, can his opponent see it? That's the thing, probably, right? Yeah. So you don't want to make it where your opponent can see it, but it's tough with Koreans because they, they have so much vision. Because they can always build a counter tower, but it looks like blue isn't doing that. Which is a little surprising. But he is on stone, he is going to castle age, so he might just be willing to drop a castle here once he hits the next age. Oops, Gaia. It looks like his uh, gamble here is a really good economy. Um, actually getting pretty close to clicking up to the next age. And that's with a forward tower that's harassing his opponent and a few scouts. So um, I think it's actually a pretty good build, for a, especially for a, if it's a 1300. Um, I would encourage, you know, probably two villagers on stone or something if you're going to go forward with three villagers. Because you are going to need more towers. And for example, one right here would go a long way, even if you're just building with one villager. Because... You'd essentially be uh, distracting your opponent even further. Now, this part, too, is you can't really stop this tower from going down. So you either want to go build another one um, or use these villagers for something else. Maybe even just getting the deer. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of stealing your opponent's deer when you're Mongols, but definitely possible here. Okay. So he does have his opponent kind of boxed in here, which is good. And he's stonewalling on the sides. Okay, that's another reasonable way. Instead of doing these box walls, you can also stonewall in. Um, the second you build your fire ship, you want to make sure that it's... Use the gather point on the enemy dock if um, if you know they have a dock. That's probably a suggestion I would make. Um, and if you're already at 800 food, 300 gold, just go to the next stage. Don't don't get wheel right now. Um, I know it is good for your economy. Oh, I see. He needs the second building, so okay, then it's, that's fair. And uh, that's, a, that's a quick reminder, always. You always want to look... When you have around 600 food, always check that second building. It, you know... That one reminder to myself has been very valuable over the years, and I would encourage everyone. 600 food, where's my second building? Um, if you remember that, uh, it'll help you in the future. So yes, we're asking quite a bit here. And he doesn't know that his opponent's going a castle, which could be a surprise. But he is walling in here. Now the one thing I will say is you want to make sure you don't have any palisade walls if you're going to have buildings in your wall. And stone walls, because this is going to be the weak spot. Now, obviously, you can't, you know, you don't have enough stone to to do all stone, but, you know, you could always do two, two, two more tiles of stone here, and then the same houses, and you'd have a much uh, more sturdy wall there. It is good to, yes, to keep checking on the fish, which he has been doing here. Looks like he's killed all of them now, except for one. And you can always, when you, you know, you could, I mean, you have 18 on food, so I'd probably say don't... Um, the one other thing I will mention is, as you're going to Castle Age, you want to decide what you're going to do. So, this is a part that newer players um, sometimes have a tough time planning. And uh, I would say in this particular case, if you recognize you have 19 on food and 5 on wood, you're going to get to the next stage with tons and tons of food and almost no wood. Um, so I would actually encourage probably pulling off about half the villagers, maybe 10 of them, and uh, putting them on wood. And on stone or gold, depending on what you're trying to do. And uh, Bloodlines, I think, is a good strategy. You probably want a second... Yeah, got the upgrades. Maybe a second stable. And this is good, getting a few more on wood here. Um, just because uh, you will be short on wood pretty quick here. And the second you see that first war wagon, you better be a little bit panicked. Because um, th this... Uh, so one other thing you, I want to say for pink here is you, you want to check your walls after you think you're finished walling. So send a villager. Right-click outside your walls. If they make it outside, they'll tell you that there's still a hole. So, for example, it would tell you that this is still open, which is very dangerous. Um, the other thing I want to highlight is water is not secure. One, one fire ship does not make it secure. Um, if your enemy went one turtle ship or even one fire ship and one transport, it's very easy to hop these uh, over the pond and really do some damage. And that's why even with these stone walls, I'd, I'd like a building wall that's kind of partially complete. Um, although I guess you do have camels in this case to deal with it, so that's, that's probably doable as well. Yeah, so your enemy's just picking those off. But um, let's speed up a bit here. So it looks like you can't do a lot of damage at the moment, and your enemy can't do a lot of damage at the moment until they get over there. 
And you did, your enemy did get the War Galley upgrade. That's pretty expensive, actually. So here, I would say... If you had it... That's, um... You definitely want to use those camels to get, get rid of the War Wagons. I think, I think you already know that quite well. Um, you also want to... Your focus right now, you got 600, 700 food. You want to get more on wood and, and get a few town centers up. And uh, yeah, there's there's just too many war wagons there, especially with the ships. Definitely want to run away. I actually probably wouldn't fight this unless I had like eight camels, ten camels. I don't know, somewhere in that range. And you did notice the hole. That's good. I'm glad you picked up on that. And you are still keeping an eye on your opponent. That's good too. Um, obviously, one transport ship now is a big deal, so you want to keep some army on water, I think. Although, it's getting a little tough when he's going water, too, so. Actually, you know what? I'd say you got, you got two options here. Your primary option would be to keep enough army at home so that if, when he does get those war wagons in, that you can deal with it. So, whether that's knights or camels, I think both will, will do the trick in this case. There's a good boom going here. That's good. Um, at this point, you're getting close to 600 stone, 650 stone. I might even encourage, you know, finishing that off and getting a castle up. But but uh, you definitely do want enough cavalry to deal with this army here. That's good. And I think, yeah, this is the perfect time to hit. You kind of have them trapped. And you have enough to, to probably deal with this. Really good fight because uh, you really trapped them in there. That was well done. And also, war wagons are a little bit slower than cavalry, so um, they will die to cavalry. Now, I would say in this case, you've already you cleaned up his army. You you want to use this army on your enemy base somewhere. It's a little tough when he's got a castle defending a lot of it, but um, maybe even heading this side and, and um, making sure he's. Oh, this is a good find right here. Definitely a really good find. It looks like you're gonna make that a doubt castle. It's a really good job. Now, obviously, you want to clear up this army, too, so you can deal with that. Nice nice play there, by the way. Taking this castle off. <laughs> Repairing the house. That is one way to deal with it. It's only a couple units. You probably can make... Uh, you have three stables, three camels to clean this up. So, But, uh, yeah, this is a good idea, too. I'm definitely a big fan of this. Uh, building your own castle right next to it. Definitely got to keep an eye on this and watch to make sure you don't get too close. Go a little faster here. So I think there's going to be a little bit of a delay. You did convert one unit. Yeah, that's good. And you want to grab the relics too. There's two in, in your base. Two monks. Definitely keep an eye on that. Okay. Looks like it's going to be a... So when it looks like this, it looks like it's going to be a couple minutes of kind of booming and uh, getting to the next stage and... Oh my god, three three relics in this area, that's good. Okay, let's watch this. So here, if you keep, um, if you can, oh, that's a lot of pikes. Oh, you, you paid it really close attention too, good job. That could have been a painful, I mean, even using a couple of cavalry, but it still could have been much worse than that for sure. So in this case, I don't know if you want to go forward or go back. Um, I'd probably run to the castle, but I guess if you can sneak up on this army and do some damage, it's going to be good. Oh yeah, there you go. So yeah, if you're gonna have cavalry, this is a really smart way to use it. You essentially outmaneuvered the pikemen and really cleared up a lot of his army. And I would say this is a learning opportunity for blue. Is um, if you have pikemen uh, and you have other army and you have a bunch of villagers, you want to keep them together and uh, make sure to pay attention to that. All right, going Mangadai here and probably clicking up pretty soon. Um, uh, one thing I want to mention is uh, when you get a lot of wood like that, yeah, build a market right away. And uh, that's one that most people know. But I will say the second thing you want to do is sell, you know, not only sell the wood, but take 20 villagers off wood, you know, or 10, and just put them on a gold mine nearby. You know, any of these gold mines. Yeah, do exactly like that. Good raids going on here. Going to the other side, that's, that's excellent. Definitely want to raid. When you have cavalry, you want to raid as many spots as you can. It's tough with the castle and, and this castle, but uh, coming around the opposite side, that's a really good strategic decision you made there. 
Uh, building this castle here, yeah, I think it's kind of necessary. You can build it a little bit closer, by the way, as long as your villagers are on this side, and then you can get a little bit closer to getting that water control back if you need it in the future. But I uh, see so you are going to the Imperial Age, which is good here. Now, with the uh, Mongols, I think you're doing the right job here. You want to... Um, I actually think, uh, on top of getting rid of your wood, you want to take another 10 villagers and go on stone. Because um, you're going to need Megadai as well here. But overall, it's looking pretty good here. you denying this castle too. <laughs> Building your own. Ooh, that's getting a little dicey here, actually. i definitely run away here and let this go. Yeah, and you are. That's good. Okay, and now this is where you have to regroup and kind of recollect here. Which looks like you're doing a good job of. And uh, absolutely the right combo here. Mangadai and Light Calf. Your opponent's going war wagons, and they got a bit on water here. Okay. This one is a tough one, too. I'd, I'd want a few docks and making some war galleys and galleons. Just because you can hit quite a few things here. Um, even just the helping out your army here. Good job here picking off the treb. I know it cost you a bit, but... Um, I would also say, uh, at this point, you want to prioritize getting the uh, elite upgrade. Once you have about 20 Mangadai, that's uh, definitely a really important upgrade. And it looks like you have all the other upgrades, so that's the last one. I'd, I'd even say uh, I'd probably prioritize Mangadai upgrade over the Hussar upgrade. Um, you also have quite a few villagers. 150 is a good number. I'd, I'd usually recommend stopping around there. Even 140 is probably good, but I guess if you get raided, it's good to have a few extras. Um, you also want to, when you pick up relics, you want to shift click so that you grab all the relics. So go here, go back, go here, go back. Well, let's watch this for a bit. Uh, one other suggestion here is you want to repair this castle and you also want to build your own trebs. I see you're just picking, you're cherry picking them here, which is good. Get the last one and then head out. And you have the lead upgrade here too, that's really good. And I think uh, you've really stopped him dead in his tracks with that. Um, but especially by putting those hussars in front and he'll, killing the trebuchets. Um, also, when you're at this point in the late game, yeah, definitely hitting both sides. Really good idea. The other thing I want to add is um, you definitely want to add some rams. Uh, rams are great against war wagons. They do almost no damage against rams. And uh, Mongol rams are amazing. So, And uh, there is one unique thing you could do here. I'm not necessarily saying you should in this particular case, but uh, you can always bring more Mangadai to the other side too. And... Kind of do both sides at the same time. But uh, let's keep going here. Um, I'm definitely, I'm always a huge fan of raids. Um, it distracts your opponent, it does a lot of damage. Um, this is looking like a dicey fight. I would run from this fight if I were you. And that's something you should pay attention to quite a bit at this stage of the game, is where to fight and where not to fight. Um, obviously it's, uh, you know, war wagons are extremely good against uh, any sort of archer unit which Mangadai are. Uh, just the high pierce armor and uh, high attack and high hit points. But good idea picking off the trebs here. Kind of keeping this area neutral at the moment. These raids have got to be so annoying for your opponent. Okay, good repairing here. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is great. This is brilliant right here. I actually think what's going to happen is, you know, you're kind of holding off on this side and killing on this side. Okay, so let's watch this side for a bit because I think this side's kind of un under control. Very heavy raids, okay. Now, I would encourage uh, siege rams with this. Um, four or five siege rams in, in both sides and you're going to really steamroll. Alright, so good push here. Killed the castle. Tons of Hussars streaming in. Um, this side is still tied up, which is very good. You have more villagers than you need by a few, so it's okay if you lose a few. Uh, it's going to be tough to get that castle up, maybe, but... I think your opponent's really distracted here. There's just too much going on for him. I think you're kind of starving him out here, which is good. Oh, and this this is just enough delay to get this, this castle up. And <laughs> I like the house walls over here. Basically saying, you know what, I got double castles here. 
I can I can wait. At the same time, your opponent is in a lot of trouble here. Just you're taking all his base. Um, I would say one thing. The other thing too is the second you get control of a gold mine, send you have too much wood. Send twelve villagers here. Build a build the gold mine. Just take those resources. Essentially, you're stealing them. <laughs> I like this too. Yeah, you might as well. Your villagers not do anything. And if you had one ram, it could take those out too. <laughs> That's epic. Yeah. And just pushing your opponent here, and you kind of stalled them on the other side. This is very well done. I would also say, don't send your Megadai out. Just garrison them in the castle, or put them back here. Just doing a lot of damage at the same time. Yeah, so you're you're really taking the advantage here. Um, with uh, killing the army with two castles. Oh, oops. Return to map. So these two castles are really doing a ton of damage. They got like 15 arrows between the two of them. And your opponent uh, really needed them at home, I think. Uh, you, this push has really just taken out his economy and taken over the map control and all those raids were doing a ton of damage. So I think this is a very well done game for a 1300 raided player. I actually think you'd be um, slightly higher if you spent a little bit more of your wood and maybe on the way to Castle Age uh, refocused your economy a little bit to, to focus on booming. and. Um, but uh, overall, uh, quite a quite a good entertaining game here. Thanks for sending this to me, Gamble. Um, definitely look forward to future ones uh, down the road. So, and also I'll say if uh, if anyone wants their game analyzed, just uh, shoot it to me in an email. I'll put my link in the description, and uh, you know we're gonna try and analyze some games when I get some time. So, <clears throat> anyways, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, smash the, the like button and hit subscribe, and we'll have more like this in the future. Until uh, next time. See ya.